Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with the recent release of Ether SX2, the awesome PS2 emulator for Android. I figured we'd go ahead and test it out on a $99 phone. Now, this is a prepaid or a pay-as-you-go phone from Boost Mobile, and it's known as the Celero 5G. I've done a video on it. We tested out some emulation, and that was before the PS2 emulator was released. But as for PSP, Dreamcast, N64, and basically anything under that, and some easier to emulate GameCube games, this device is actually good to go. And it's definitely one of the most powerful $100 Android devices that I've tested on the channel so far. As for the specs, we've got the MediaTek Dimensity 700. Two A76 cores at 2.2 GHz, six A55 cores at 2 GHz, and the GPU is a Mali G57 MC2 up to 950 MHz. We've also got 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM, and it's not a super powerhouse, but for the price, this is a great performer. And in this video, we're going to test out some PS2 games using Ether SX2 from the Google Play Store. And before we get started, I want to give you a quick rundown on the settings I'm using with Ether SX2 in this device right here. So I've reset the app. I'm just going to start it up, give you to the welcome screen, go through the FAQ, and here's where it's at. We have safe and we have unsafe defaults. If I was using a higher end device, I'd go with optimal, but for this one, we're going with fast and unsafe. I'll import my BIOS, set up my game directory, and I've got a couple more settings that I change in here. So we'll get to the settings, we'll go to graphics, and from here I scroll down and there's two options I usually choose with these lower end devices. And those are GPU palette conversion and preload textures. So we've got those two settings and we're also set to fast and unsafe, which isn't going to give us accurate emulation, but I wasn't expecting that from a $100 device. Okay, so here we are. We'll go ahead and launch the app. I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth here, and I've got a few save states for these games that we're going to test. And on this device here, I've tested about 10 games. Now, there's definitely going to be more PS2 games that don't run at full speed on this device here than there are that do, but there are a few games that actually perform much better than I ever thought they would on a $99 Android device. First up, we have Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex, and I showed you the settings I'm using here. So we'll go ahead and load this save state up. All the information we need is up in the top right hand corner. I know it's a bit hard to see, but we do have a lower resolution screen on this device. I'm filming in 4K. This is uploaded to YouTube in 4K, so I really do hope it turns out all right. Now we will see this slow down every once in a while, but uh, it's actually running pretty decently right now. Going into this, I didn't expect to run any PlayStation 2 game at full speed, but this is really, really close. And these devices are popping up all the time for 100 bucks or $130. This one was actually $99. I did a full review on it. It's got that MediaTek Dimensity 700. So I'd say next year we're going to get some really cheap phones that'll be able to run these games at full speed. We can get an upgrade on this CPU here. We should be good to go. Let's move over to something else that ran pretty well, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now I completely understand that we can run the Dreamcast version of this on pretty much any device, and to tell you the truth, the Dreamcast version was always my favorite, but I still had to test this out. It's always one of my favorite games, be it on PS2, Dreamcast, or even Arcade. Load it up right here, and just take a look at how well this runs. I did run into a ton of games that really don't work well on this device, and that's why I mentioned don't run out and pick this one up just for PS2, because, I mean, it's not a great phone for it, but it's still pretty impressive to see that at least a couple games can run really well. And Ratchet & Clank always locks up right here on this Mali GPU. I've tried it with Vulkan, I've tried it with OpenGL, but that's about as far as I can go. Either way, the game doesn't run well anyway. 
I was really hoping I could get some good performance with the PS2 version of Auto Modalista, but unfortunately, we just don't have enough power to push it. I was really impressed with the performance of Bloody Roar 4. Now we do have dips under 60, but if I didn't have that FPS counter up in the top right hand corner, I probably would have never noticed it. I'd say that this was running at full speed because overall it does feel good while playing it. Here's Tony Hawk, Pro Skater 3. And the final game I have for this video is Contra, another one of those games that does work well on this device. So in the end, don't run out and buy this specific phone or something with the Dimensity 700 just to play PS2 games because it really doesn't cut it. We just don't have enough power to do it properly. But if you already own a device with this chipset, just note that there are a few games that will be playable with Ether SX2. It's free on Google Play and it's definitely worth a shot if you're into emulation. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing other emulators and native Android games running on this $99 Android phone, I'll leave a link to that first video I created in the description. And definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will be testing some more lower-end devices and mid-range devices with this new PlayStation 2 emulator. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.